Hey, Chris Bayless here from the Sponsorship Collective. In this video, I dive into the most common and probably most frustrating sponsorship sales objections. We hear them all the time. If you would like a copy of these objections and uh, some of my responses to those objections, in the comments below, drop your favorite or your least favorite objection, the one you get all the time that you hate. And a member of my team will reach out and get the document over to you. And of course, you should definitely join us in our free Facebook group. I'll leave a link for that down below. I go live every week and deliver training just like this. Hey everybody, Chris Bayless here. We're gonna talk all things sponsorship objections. Let me just get my my iPad set up so I can share my screen with you. I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite objections, perhaps some of my least favorite objections. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about some of the ways that, that you can overcome them. Let's see, let me just share my screen here. Make sure I close my, my email so you don't see behind the scenes, all the mess. And we have iPad. Beautiful. Okay, so this is what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk all things objections. So I'm gonna be going over a whole bunch of the most common objections, uh, some of my fave, some of my favorite objections. And then also I'm, I'm going to make this worksheet available. If you'd like the way that you can grab this worksheet, just send me a proposal is indeed an objection. You hear that you're in trouble. Budget is already spent. We don't do sponsorship. We just want to booth signage samples or any other boring asset. We prefer to do in kind only. Can I just give you free stuff? That's good. Right. Uh, let me think about it before we decide on next steps. Marketing is not, or sponsorship is not part of our local offer operations. I don't have time for a discovery call. Just send me something, um, send me an email. So if you want that, all you have to do is in the comment section below, write your absolute favorite objection, your most hated objection, uh, the objection you get most often. Uh, ooh, I should um, turn my mug around. I'm using my Disney mug. I get paid a dollar every time I drink out of that Disney mug on camera. I'm just kidding. I wish. Disney, if you're watching, let's work on a deal. So drop down below your favorite sponsorship objection, whatever it is, that will be the signal for myself or for my team to reach out and send over that document that, uh, that I just showed you. So next time you get those objections, you'll be ready to go. Okay, so let's do this. First of all, we need to dis we, we need to understand the difference between an objection and a complaint. That's expensive is not an objection. That's a lot of money is not an objection. I'm too busy is not an objection. These are complaints. In sales, we don't respond to complaints. In sales, we respond to objections. The way to go from complaint to objection is to ask questions. That's too expensive. What do you mean by that? We want to know what the actual objection is. And I find that in particular sponsorship salespeople, more so than other salespeople, because we have this thing called the sponsorship package, fall for objections too quickly. Just send me a sponsorship proposal. I'll have a look. The committee will review it. We believe these things as we have this thing called happy ears. Mike Mark uh, is, the, is the person who taught me this concept of happy ears. So we hear, just send me a proposal or just complete the online form. And we say jackpot. And then a day, a week, a month, a year, 10 years goes by and we don't have any sponsorship cash. So what do I say when someone says, you know what, just send me a proposal. I actually don't have a proposal. We don't have a stock package that we just kind of give to people. 
frankly, I'm not even sure what I would propose yet because we haven't had a chance to talk. So why don't we just jump on a quick call and you can tell me what it is you're trying to achieve and then I'll create a proposal based on that. And if we're on the call, just send me a proposal. Absolutely. What would you like me to include in that proposal? In my experience, people ask for a proposal because they're looking for something specific. Tell me what you're hoping to find in a sponsorship package or tell me what you typically look for when you open up a sponsorship package. That's $2. Sure. Here's how our process works. We spend 15 minutes together on a discovery call. Then once I understand your goals, if I agree that I can help you, I will offer you a solution. And that is what we call a proposal. So just send me a proposal. Absolutely. What would you like me to put in that proposal? That is how you overcome that objection. If a person does not have 20 minutes to have a conversation with you about what to put in the proposal, does it seem likely that they have 30 minutes to read a proposal from a stranger later on? Of course not. We already know that this is a smoke screen, that this is indeed a lie. There's another saying um, taught to me by, by a sales salesperson that I really respect. Buyers are liars. <laughs> prospects are liars. They tell you something, but they don't mean it. Just send me a proposal means no thanks. And we fall for it. Budget already spent. How many times do you get this one? So remember, just drop your favorite uh, objection down, down in the comments below. And, uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, my team will, um, will, will send you a link. Uh, and you can download the download the worksheet or better yet, join us in the Facebook group. And if you're in Facebook, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll send them right over to you. My budget is already spent. No problem. I call that the Cole Gordon response. Another, another great sales salesperson. No problem. No matter what they say. Oh, I hate your ideas. They're all terrible. No problem. I totally get it. I'm on, we're on the same page. I'm a, I'm a fool. I get it. But let me just ask you a question. <laughs> so budget already spent. Oh, no problem. I totally get that. Let me just ask you a question. When do you typically assign your budget? If they don't know the answer to that question, they, it's not that their budget is spent. It's that you're not speaking to a decision maker or there's something else going on. When do you typically assign your new budget or your budget? I don't know. Well, then how do you know it's already spent? <laughs> um, when does your budget cycle renew? I want to know the answer to that question. Why? Because I believe that cash flow is finances problem. And I say that as an entrepreneur and business owner. So uh, cash flow is actually really my problem, but I don't care. I don't worry about cash flow. I worry about contracts and booked deals. That's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in run rate. The, ca the cash will come in eventually. As, lo as long as you don't stop selling, uh, you'll be fine. So I often say to people, hey, no problem. Cash flow is finances problem, right? Like who cares? So the people that assign you a budget um, don't assign it to you again for another three months. Well, I have a finance person too, and they're not going to like what I'm about to say, but I don't care. Let's focus on how we can actually just help you achieve your goals. Then if we want to work together, we'll just invoice you whenever the heck you need. It doesn't matter to me when you pay, even if it's after the event, opportunity, campaign, et cetera. This way you still get all the benefits, but we don't have to worry about budget cycles. Sound fair? Sound fair? We call that the F word in sales. It's really hard for people to say that something is not fair, to accuse someone of being unfair, unless they are being unfair. Uh, so fair enough. In other words, my budget's already spent. Okay, well, let's talk about whether or not we can actually help you solve your problem. And then if we can, we'll figure out something that matches your budget cycle. Does that seem fair? If they're telling the truth, of course, that's fair. You drop the F word. If they're lying to you, that will not seem fair. Well, you know, we, and then you're going to get the real objection. So this is budget already spent. Is it a complaint or is it an objection? If it's a complaint, that means they're not telling you the truth. There is another objection that you did not uncover in discovery. If, however, they say, yeah, that sounds great. I'd love to talk about that. Perfect. So then what, 
you come to an agreement, what we'll do, we'll send over an agreement, we'll get under contract, we'll take care of all the legal stuff. Uh, and then we'll invoice what? What do you think is fair? 10%? We'll do 10% up front. So you got them in a legal contract and you got a deposit. If you're comfortable with that approach, then away you go. I am comfortable with that approach. Uh, how can, eh, the other question, how can we make this happen for you knowing that your needs and your budget cycle are out of sync? Because once they tell you what they're trying to achieve, yet they have no budget for it. So that means you're gonna miss your budget. You're gonna miss your goal. You're gonna miss your revenue goals and you have no more budget to help you. So how can we get over the problem of your budget and your needs not being in sync? You still need 50 new clients, 50 new sales, hundred new sales, hundred new customers. We can help you get them, but your finance person is not gonna free up the budget. So what can we do to get around that together? How do we make this happen? This is how we get around the budget already spent lie. <laughs> we don't do sponsorship. Usually when you hear we don't do sponsorship, it's because you are presenting sponsorship as logos on signs. Based on that definition, no one does. No one has done sponsorship like that for like 40 plus years. A logo on a sign is not sponsorship. A logo on a sign is barely advertising, like the worst advertising. So we don't do sponsorship. Neither do we. Now, before you come back with the P word, oh, well, no, we do partnerships. Forget all that nonsense. You're talking to brands who are trying to bring in customers. Whether you're a sponsor, a partner, it, it's irrelevant. We don't do sponsorship. Yeah, neither do we. Did I say sponsorship? I didn't mean to. The gold, silver, bronze, logo soup thing, what a waste of everyone's time, right? Agreed. Yeah, totally. That's why we don't do it. What we do is help brands connect to their audience in meaningful ways. Some people call that sponsorship. I don't care what it's called. I just want to connect you with your target market. So let's drop the word sponsorship. And in, instead, why don't you just tell me what your marketing goals are, your sales goals are? This is about the prospect. We don't do sponsorship. Yeah, neither do we. What are you trying to achieve? Keep the conversation going. We don't do sponsorship. Well, just tell me what your marketing goals are. Oh, well, you don't have a budget. Okay, well, we can work around budget. You are handling complaints. <laughs> when you hit that many complaints and objections in a row, when you hit that many complaints and objections in a row, that is a sign to you that your discovery is, is, needs work. Your sales chops need work. We just want a booth, signage, samples, or any other kind of boring asset. The first question you want to ask. So someone's like, hey, you know, we don't need to have a meeting. Just I'll just take a booth. Cool. Can I ask a, an honest question? Why do you want a booth? What are you going to, what are you planning to accomplish with a booth? What are you, what are you hoping to achieve with this asset? Why is it, why is a booth important to you? And how will you know that the booth did what you wanted it to do? How will you measure success? It sounds like you're, okay, so let me, let me understand this. You're trying to get people to sample your product. You, let me just push back on this a bit. I'm curious. I frankly, I don't think a booth is going to do that. It's not the best way. What if we could actually set up a, a situation where you're talking to people with your product in their hands and you get them to sample it while you're there by by giving them some incentive to do so, like winning something really cool. You think that might actually get more people to consume your consumer samples? Yeah, but we just need a booth. No, I get that. We'll, we'll include a booth. I just want to know how you're going to know a booth was successful. Do they just want a booth or do they want the outcome from a booth? I have yet to meet a business that sees any value in booths for a booth's sake. You want a booth because you want customers. So ask those questions, dig a bit deeper. And if they just want a booth and the booth is going to serve their purpose, great, sell it to them. Um, we like to do in-kind only or free stuff. So for my nonprofit uh, pals, that we get this a lot. Like nonprofit sponsorship seekers get this a lot. Well, everyone else in the sponsorship world uses, instead of in-kind, we call that sampling. And sampling is expensive. You pay me per sample. You give me the samples. You pay to have a team hand out the samples. Like when someone says to me, I want to give out product at your, at your event or to your database, I think jackpot. 
I just made tens of thousands of dollars in cash from the sponsor who wants to give out samples, depending on the size of the database. When, when talking to a nonprofit, often it's like, well, we're just so kind. We'll give you this free product. So when someone says we prefer to do in kind only, it happens in the for-profit space as well. Um, but really happens in the nonprofit space. My first question is always, oh, why? And then I stop talking. Well, we just thought it'd be nice of us to give you, right. You, you thought it would be nice for a protein bar producer to give a 5k race protein bars. <laughs> it sounds like what you're hoping to do is get people to try your, your product. Yes. Okay. Why do you want people to try your product? Like, why is that a value to you? So you want to get to the real goal of why they want to give away in kind. The real goal of product giveaway is to get your product in the hands of the right people. Yes. Perfect. In my experience, the best way to do that is for both of us to put effort in to getting the product in the hands of the people you're trying to get the product to. And in order to, for us to allocate staff time to the activation, there's hard costs. Never mind what it would cost you to get your product in front of those audiences in any other way. So what do you think is a reasonable budget to make sure we get the outcome that you're after? This is how we handle the in-kind. Let me think about it. Let me think about it before we decide on next steps. Absolutely. No problem at all. I get it. I, I'm the same way. But what specifically is it that you want to think about? This is the one that is really hard for people to overcome because many people use this as a lie to salespeople. So when a sales, when a prospect says it to us, we know what they really mean, which is, no, I just want to get off this call as soon as possible. You can't overcome an objection that you believe. So stop doing this. <laughs> That's step one. What is it that you need to think about? Let's discuss it right now. Of course, what are your main concerns? Well, I just like to think about things for 24 hours. Uh, totally. And, but what specifically is it that you want to think about? What between right now and 24 hours from now will happen that, will, that you'll know you've thought about it enough? I just want to think about it. Of course. So does that mean right now you're 100% go? Yes. Then what's going to change between now and then? I'm curious. Score one to 10, one being, boy, I wish I didn't pick up the phone today. 10 being, I want to buy a thousand million of these things. Where are you? One to 10. How likely are you that you're going to move forward? Eight. Perfect. I understand you want to think about it, but what is it that you need to be in 10? The truth is all of the info you're going to get about our opportunities are from me right now on this call. I don't have a sponsorship package to send you. I don't have anything to share with you. So let's just have this conversation now so that you have everything you need in order to make a decision. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, Voxer is an amazing app, except when you turn on your phone accidentally, people just start talking. Thank goodness that was one of my most polite friends and colleagues who never swears on Voxer. Okay. Marketing is not part of our local operations. We have a different geography, HQ, department, et cetera, or my Canadian friends. Everything is done in America. Well, probably the whole world outside of the US. Everything is done in the US. Um, so the question is, do you mean to say that you have a $0 marketing budget or that you have to go through an internal process to get approval from another office or department? I want to get clear. You have a marketing budget and someone has to approve it or you don't even have a marketing budget. And so for those of you who are shocked at my calling sponsorship marketing, um, in fact, they are one. What is the process to get them involved in this decision? What can I give you to advocate internally? When do you wanna jump on a call with them so I can explain what it is that we can do together? Which departments have a budget right now that we can tap into? Sales, marketing, human resources? We can get creative. I don't have time for a discovery call. If by email, no problem. I'm happy to jump on a call while you multitask, like on your way to meetings. We can do it by email if easier. In my experience, a five minute discovery call is the best way to save time. So I don't write a hundred page proposal that you now have to read. So let's just jump on a call for five minutes. Of course, 
I'm happy to meet with someone else on your team. That's totally cool. Just let me know who it is so that we can make sure that we put something together that actually serves your needs. Hey, I totally get it. What's a better time for me to jump on a call? Get a call in the books. You want to make sure that you were leaving no stone unturned. What you get in this world, what you give in this world is what you get. Do you make it a habit of not being honest with people when you're on a sales call? You are reinforcing objections that you cannot overcome. Let your yeses be yeses and your noes be noes. You cannot overcome an objection you believe. If you don't believe that your opportunity is worth whatever you're asking for, you need to do evaluation because you'll never sell. People will not sell things they don't believe in. Most people, most people, um, right? If you always tell people, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time to think about this, but what you really mean is no thanks. And you just don't want to tell them you're going to have trouble overcoming that objection. Okay. If you would like a copy of the object, the most common objections and how I um, overcome them. Some of the language that I use today, just share your favorite objection down below. And someone from my team will send you a link if you're on YouTube. Uh, in Facebook, we'll uh, send it over via Messenger. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, click the link, join us in Facebook. It's a party. All right, everybody. Good luck out there.